Okay then, time for the third and final part of this series on design patterns that a senior Android developer must know. Or was it called the Complete Guide to Android Design Patterns? I'm not sure. Anyway, let's begin with the Observer pattern. In this example, the Observer interface defines a method update that should be implemented by classes that want to observe changes in a data source. The Observable interface defines methods for adding and removing observers and notifying observers of changes in the data. The data source class implements the observable interface and it keeps a list of observer objects that are registered to receive updates. When the data in the data source changes, the notify observers method is called to notify all registered observers of the change. The data display class implements the observer interface and it provides an implementation of the update method to display the updated data. Finally, we create an instance of the data source and data display classes, and we register the data display instance as an observer of the data source instance. And when the set data method is called on the data source instance, it notifies all of its registered observers, which in this case is the data display instance. If we run this now, it will run just fine, but nothing's going to show up. That's because we haven't defined the update method to print anything. We can do that now and try again. And now you see that when the data source called set data, data display was notified of it and immediately called its notify method and printed the data. Okay, now for the command pattern. In this example, the command interface defines a method execute that should be implemented by concrete command objects. The print command class implements the command interface and provides an implementation of the execute method that prints a message. The command invoker class keeps a list of command objects and provides methods for adding and executing commands. When the execute commands method is called, it executes all of the commands in its list in order and then clears the list. Finally, we create an instance of the command invoker class and we add two instances of the print command class to its list of commands. When we call the execute commands method on the command invoker instance, it executes both of the print command instances, which in turn print their respective messages to the console. In summary, while the command pattern focuses on encapsulating requests as objects and decoupling requesters from receivers, the observer pattern focuses on establishing a notification mechanism between objects and decoupling producers from consumers. Well, that's it for the series. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something. I know I didn't. Mm, see you in the next one.